Okay, questions? All right, we've got Surya here. Um, Jeff, Jeff's got the microphone coming up behind you. Yeah. Again, uh, thank you for uh, doing a wonderful presentation. I am Surya Pedinti. I have Rem present. Remember to speak loudly because your voice isn't coming sure. over that. I am Surya Pedinti. I'm inventor of closed loop electric propulsion. I have heard uh, quite a few challenging presentations here, as well as where you have elaborated uh, challenges with the ranges, battery packs, as well as the urban mobility, uh, VTOL versus uh, ETOL, all these things. The one critical part or critical thing for this electric flying missions is the battery pack and the range limitations of the battery pack which poses perennial challenge. So are there any other comparable inventions which is going on without the need for superchargers other than the solid state batteries which are upcoming in future? The one thing which I'm proposing here is a closed loop propulsion which is a self-charging mechanism. I would uh, take it privately later on. But other than that, is there anything going on in the industry? I think, I think it's, a, it's open to anyone who wants to speak. Well, well I'm going to, to bring a part of the answer. Uh, at Uber Elevate one month ago, we heard uh, the head of the FAA saying one major thing is give me the data. That means we need experience, we need knowledge, we need data on any solution to be proven as being safe enough for public transportation. And that means that all the novelty we're thinking, we're talking about, will be applied not next year, but in the future. But for the time being, we have to comply with what is existing. And it's a nice way for smart engineers to develop this existing technology and to make possible, possible all the electric flight we're talking about. That's a part of the question, of the answer, sorry. From my point of view, and maybe some other people may see, may, may see different things, the technology readiness level of solid state is quite today very low, about TR3, something like that. And we have to, work, to, to wait to get TL9 and then to get data. So that means, according to me, we will not see solid state batteries in transport uh, 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 in public transportation before the next uh, eight or ten years. For the time being, uh, we have to cope with what is existing. Ba specific uh, energy of batteries has been increasing around 4% a year. Um, anything that caused a great step in that, I would be very suspicious of without seeing it. Um, figure 4% a year for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with both Gide and, and Dave here, um, and I'm going to speak like f from the point of view of Cafe because I've, you know, we've been putting on these symposiums forever, and um, in the past we usually had a lot of battery people come in, and you know there was there's a lot of great ideas out there, and they don't seem to materialize. Or what's materializing is that the price of batteries is definitely going down, but the performance of them. Yeah, and it's not just the performance. The performance in the correct application, in the correct conditions, is just we're just not seeing a lot of movement. Or it's it's progressing, like you're saying, four percent. You know, that's that's what I'm seeing. According to me, one reason why we are not going to see very fast increase in uh, energy density is because the main market, the automotive market, does not need it. They've got what they need. So all the improvement is going to come from the reliability, the cost, of course, uh, uh, probably the number of cycles, but not of the density, energy density. Not thinking about that.
Uh, oh, oh, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Yeah. In, in my conversations with um, the folks at Harbor Air, which are going to start converting the first Beaver this summer, um, they recognized that the weight of the batteries was not what they wanted to be, that in fact the empty weight of the aircraft will go up. Uh, the benefit they see is that while well, the weight will go up and they'll lose a seat or maybe they'll lose two seats in a Beaver, uh, the operating costs will go down so that you know they're looking at what's the revenue stream from that aircraft. Uh, they're going to maybe lose a passenger or two, but the operating costs will go down such that they will, the, the plan is and the hope is that they will make more money than they do with the aircraft currently. And then once proved on the, on the smaller aircraft, they will put it into a 14 seat, uh, 14 passenger aircraft, and they will see the real benefit. Uh, the other thing in terms of uh, why it made sense for them is when you have a very short route system, uh, you can fly the route and have the reserve and not compromise on you know, you're not trying to go 100 miles. Your flights are 15 minutes, 39 miles, and 69 miles. So it works well. If you have a route network where it's, you know, you can drive there, uh, it's a little bit, you know, the, the competitive, uh, uh, the business case is a little bit different. So, but when you have water involved or a circuitous route, uh, you can offer the, the time savings that makes, the, it, makes it attractive. Other questions? Uh, yes, Eric. Hi. My name is Eric. I'm from Norway. And I have uh, one question since you are emergent technologies. Uh, I had one funny question for you. That's ho which one of you are driving an electric car personally? One. That's good. And the next question was for Jills also. In your calculations, is the cost of the battery at the end of the life cycle that you calculated zero or is there a left cost because you can use it in homes for storage of solar energy for example well at the end of life uh, obviously about 70 to 80 percent of the initial energy is still remaining in the battery the question is is there a business case to reduce these batteries we believe that at the beginning of electric aviation such business case will be difficult due to the volume, because each electric aircraft will have its own battery packs, and we'll have to find a business case for each battery packs. Each technical solution, uh, will, each battery packs will need a specific technical solution, and it makes the business case quite difficult. We can imagine that with increasing volumes, the business case could be easier, but just imagine the business case which is existing for electric cars, even if I say that, that uh, the end of life for electric cars is not happening very often, but due to the volume of cars, it makes significant numbers, and it does not exist yet. It has to be invented. Of course, second life of the such batteries have to be invented, but I cannot talk about it now because it doesn't exist yet, and I, I guess it is too soon to think about it now. I can make a comment. I think this is the time to think about it, because if you implement the standardization of the batteries today, that gives them a second life, and everybody is thinking about it at this moment when we are developing the batteries, it would be easier to make that calculation of the leftovers of the 80% that can be used again. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously you're right. We, we, I said, uh, I didn't use the, word, the right word, sorry for that. Uh, I wanted to mean that it is difficult to think, we cannot think of business case now, but obviously we have this in mind. And if I'm talking like that about it, it is because we have, we have already thought about that, but we do not have any solution yet. Other questions? Yeah. Okay. Just a you won't it's hear yourself. Video. Okay. It's for the video. Okay. Just a comment on this uh, statement with the batteries and standardizing. The airframers are going to want to package things so that they fit within the constraints of their individual aircraft. 
and as such they tend to be more specific to a given airplane than in general. Um, it becomes a little more difficult to take a standard, absolutely standardized package to do that. Other thing is, I, uh, Dave, on your system where you were looking at the, the external blowing, did you ever look at any internal blowing at the trailing edge of the main element? I have looked at that. Um, there's been quite a few airplanes that have tried internal blowing where they blow air out the trailing edge. The, the, uh, the losses of such systems remain very, very high in all the experiments that have happened to date. So I, I thought the external blowing might be a good idea. In fact, the one slide I show with uh, the different positions of the ducted fans, uh, three of those are internal. And I started my experiments there, but with the little small engines I was using in my wind tunnel, I couldn't get enough um, airflow to really get good data. So I went to the external flow, but I, I'd like to get back to the internal. Yeah, there's some interesting papers I've seen with coanda effects on, on that yes. and getting your blowing coefficients way down. The, 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 the main point I'm trying to make here is, is that all the past work was done with internal combustion and jet engines where you had one power plant or two power plants that were this big lump. And now suddenly with electric, you can distribute this and things like what you're asking about may become possible in a way that they weren't before, and yet I see this industry, at least not publicly, talking about looking at that. Willie? I have a, I have a question for Jill. Uh, you mentioned there um, you had the cost of the, uh, that it's not good to just to calculate the cost of the energy, but uh, you also, we have to calculate the cost of the battery. And then you made the cost of the uh, battery life and then compared it with the Rotax. But on the Rotax side, I only saw you calculate fuel and not the overhaul, which is a quite high cost, which you would not have or will not have as high in an electric motor as you don't have moving parts. So I think, did you do this calculation as well while including the cost for the overhaul? Because I think then the electric training model would look much better. Yeah, you're right. We did this calculation, but I didn't have time to present it just on a few slides. But obviously you're right. For the next generation of battery packs, I'm meaning about the 1000 cycle one, the, the direct cost of direct operating cost of electric aircraft it's much better than Rotax one. You're right because it includes also not also the the, the reserve for the overall. It also includes the the, the 50 hours uh, maintenance session, the 100 hours maintenance session, and so on. So it is drastically very important. And before in in. On the top of that, you have to consider that instead of spending money by, uh, emo uh, by having the aircraft uh, at, the, at the hangar for the 100 hour uh, revision, uh, you can fly. Not only do you not spend money, but you can fly. So it expands the uh, capacity of the aircraft of flying all, all, all over the year. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, but, uh, it's a calculation and next time we, we can show this calculation. <laughs> Thank you. Well, oh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. There's robotic battery swapping to take care of that. Just on a funny note, uh, the closed loop electric propulsion We'll take care of it even further. <laughs> uh, I have one question to both David and uh, uh, Gilly. Uh, I'm sorry, Jill. Sorry. Have you ever considered electric turbofans? I have read an article about that, where they try to increase the thrust of the electric propulsion by turbocharging, similar to our 
uh, jet compressors and uh, turbochargers. I mean, I believe Rolls-Royce also acquired Siemens for that same reason, uh, trying to do some electric turbofan. That's what I read. Is that true? It's going on, the research? The, uh, the gentleman who really knows the answer to that is sitting next to you. But, uh, but uh, I, my effort was quite low budget. I used model airplane parts. Um, realizing fully that you can make much more efficient ducted fans than was available in model airplane, uh, what's available. Uh, I think the, the state of the art of understanding basically an electric turbofan is very naive at this point, and we could do much, much better, but there hadn't been a lot of work done on it. Like I say, you've got the nation's expert on that sitting next to you. I will certainly defer to him in conversation. Nothing to add. Thank you, and, and we'll hear from Rob tomorrow as well. Um, any any other uh, questions? All right, I can hear the reception and the bar out there calling us. Thank you very much.